Good day and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this tutorial video, we'll be looking at how to estimate nonlinear panel ALDF model, nonlinear panel autoregressive distributed lag model. Now, this model is essentially fit for panel data analysis with large time frame, large T. Okay, when your T is uh, 25 years and above, you might want to consider using panel ALDF model because uh, it helps it account for heterogeneity and non stationarity in the model. Okay, uh, by non linearity, let's say for the sake of this tutorial video, we want to look at the non linear effect of exchange rate on economic growth, GDP growth. Uh, what we are trying to do is that we want to look at the effect of increasing exchange rate on economic growth, GDP growth, and the effect of decreasing exchange rate on uh, economic growth. Okay, so these these are answers that the traditional linear model might not be able to provide for you. So the uh, importance of uh, the one of the advantages of a um, nonlinear model is that it isolates the effect of different directional changes in the independent variable on the dependent variable the effect of different directional changes uh, of the independent variable on the dependent variable okay now uh to do this for panel setting we are doing panel setting in uh in stata the first thing you need to do is to declare your data as panel setting how do you bring in data into stata if you don't know how to do that please uh uh, uh look at my uh my 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 uh, previous videos okay so uh how do we declare our data a panel data you type this code st set cross id year this cross id year uh is the is the unique identifier what i used to uh the headings for my unique identifier for each of the cross session let me take you to my data editor look at my data editor you see the cross id here these are the unique identifier to each of the cross session one for Algeria, two for uh, Angola, okay, three for Burkina Faso, and on and on and on like that. So in your own case, it might be country ID, it might be CID. Whatever you used to uh, as hidden for your unique identifier should what you have should be what you have in this place. Okay, you click on okay, your 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 data is declared panel data uh, panel data. So the next thing is to uh, we get to business proper. Now, the next thing we want to do that is to isolate increasing exchange rate, period of increasing exchange rate, and period of decreasing exchange rate. Okay, those are the periods we match against the dependent variable, that is the GDP growth. And how do we do that? The first thing we do is to look at the change to generate a data called change in exchange rate. Okay, we are generating this D, D, okay, it's representing change in exchange rate. Equal, we are telling you that generate change in exchange rate by differentiating this difference, D dot exchange rate. Okay, difference in econometric simply means uh, yeah, uh, you're looking for the difference between the current uh, uh, the current year value and the previous year value. Okay, now this will help us to isolate period of increase in exchange rate and period of decrease in exchange rate. Of course, when the D exchange rate when they are negative. Okay, the, the, the changes in the when they are negative, we know that that is a period of decrease in the exchange rate. And when they are positive, we know that that is a period of uh, increase in the exchange rate. So we do that. If you come to our data editor, you will realize that uh, it's already generated. Look at, okay, so we have period of increase in the exchange rate. Look at increase in the exchange rate, positive. Period of decrease in the exchange rate, you see negative. Yeah, okay. The next thing is to isolate. When we have increase, we put them uh uh put them uh, on one side and when we have decrease we put them on the other side. How do we do that? We use this code generate exchange rate decrease equals exchange rate if the change in exchange rate is less than or equal to zero. So whenever the change in exchange rate, whenever it is less than the zero, that means exchange rate is falling. In that case, we generate exchange rate decrease. This is a period where exchange rate uh uh exchange rate uh, fail okay so we we'll click on that if you come to the data editor here you would say we have it generated already okay this uh dash 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 you see th this is a period of increase in exchange rate Did, uh seta will not recommend re re recognize uh this uh these symbols okay this sign so we have to replace it with zero and how do we do that 
we do that by using this code replace exchange rate decrease equals zero if change in exchange rate is greater than or equal to zero okay if our change in exchange rate is greater than or equal to zero then whatever you whenever you see you replace uh exchange rate decrease replace it with zero you click on enter you come to data editor you will realize that all those places we have dash dash they've been replaced with zero okay it is time to generate the increase in exchange rate variable generate exchange rate increase equals exchange rate if change in exchange rate is greater than equal to zero if it is positive okay then that means exchange rate if change in exchange rate is positive then that means exchange rate is increasing so we're telling you that carry you you pick exchange rate okay within those area where we have changed exchange rate that is greater than or equal to zero you uh you click on enter and then because we know that where we do not have okay look at it so this is a period of exchange rate increase we have transferred exchange rate to exchange rate in, look at exchange rate there so this is a period of exchange rate increase and they've been transferred to under the column of exchange rate increase okay but then we have dash here so we we all right uh we come to data editor eh? a data editor we say increase in exchange rate well represented but then we have to replace uh the dash symbol in the column which is zero okay replace exchange rate increase equals zero okay something is missing here equals zero if uh changing exchange rate is less than zero those are the places where you have the dash button we do that uh you come to our data editor you realize that they've been filled with zero now we have variables that represent increasing exchange rate and decreasing exchange rate now we can estimate non-linear ALDL model uh how do we do that now to estimate uh yeah uh panel ALDL model really you there's an estimator you use we call it stpmg the stpmg is a usual written code it nest it doesn't come with stata okay so it means you have to install it if you don't have it in your, uh, your stata already you uh, just type ssc install install stpmg ssc install stpmg okay you make sure you are connected uh to the internet you click on enter okay i think uh instead of install i put install okay i have it installed already but i just want to show you uh, how it works okay they're telling me that all files already exist in a hub to bed so when you click it you connect uh to the internet you have it uploaded and then you can now do your estimation now to do the nonlinear estimation you use this code all right stpmg this year represents the short run effect, short run effect of our exchange rate, short run effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. And this year represents the uh, long run effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Okay. Uh, the dependent variable is uh, GDP growth, economic growth. Now, the nonlinear effect, we want to look at, say, this is H when exchange rate decreases, when exchange rate decreases, then FDI here was introduced to serve as a control variable in the model. Okay. This measures the speed of adjustment. Okay. Now, this MG. Now, uh, we have three methods of estimating um, uh, panel ALDL mode. We have the mean group, we have the DFE, the dynamic fixed effect, and we have the pool mean group. Okay. By default, you estimate by pool mean group. But when you add MG here, okay to the uh code you are estimating using mean mean group so with this we can uh we can do the estimation just click on enter and then we have our results so these are long run results and these are short run if you see the effect of exchange rate decrease and gdp growth the effect of uh exchange rates increase and gdp growth they have them there okay now these are short run effects this measures the speed of our adjustment okay but we don't just take it hook line and singer we need to test for the statistical significance of the non-linear relationship so to test for it 
you just come and use this code now we are testing that exchange rate increase equals a uh, exchange rate decrease you can test for both short run and uh, long run uh, asymmetry these are long run okay you test for long run asymmetry you click on enter the null hypothesis is that uh, there is no linear relationship between uh between the between the independent variable and the dependent variable as a null hypothesis and by what we have here we have to accept the null hypothesis okay however we have tested what we've tested for is just long run the existence of long run asymmetry existence of non long run uh, non-linear relationship if we want to test for short run then we will have to yeah that would be d1 dot okay and then uh d1 dot so we are trying to say that the effect of increase and the effect of decrease are somewhat the same that's what we're trying to say that's what we're trying to test it so look at the short run asymmetry we are saying that look at the uh probability the null hypothesis that there's no there's no linear relationship okay between the variables in the model and then the result is telling us to accept the null the null hypothesis okay now you could further do other do the estimation using a uh, dfe if you like you can come and say okay let me use dfe and find out how it react okay i uh, need to drop the ecm because we have the ecm estimated already so i just come here drop and then we can uh, now estimate using dfe so this is for dfe is the result how do you choose between main group and DFE and Pumin group, you need to conduct a Osman test, and that will be discussed in a subsequent video. Uh, however, if you want to look at the asymmetry effect of individual countries, for individual countries, rather, okay, for individual countries, you want to see for country A, for country B, in this case, uh, let me see the countries we have here Algeria, asymmetry effect for Algeria, asymmetry effect for uh, which other country is that? Uh, Angola, Burkina Faso. All you need to do is that. Uh, at the end of your uh code for the estimation just you type full when you type full you click on enter it is going to give you okay i think the full option doesn't work with uh dfe but let's see me go okay the full option it doesn't work with the uh dfe but for main group you see it's going to give you the individual asymmetry for each country it's going to give you the asymmetry relationship for each country look uh this is for country cross id one okay this is for cross id two where is cross id one where's cross id one cross id one is algeria cross id two is uh okay so that's the, that's uh for cross id one cross id two cross id three uh you have it for holy other countries okay uh that is how to go about non-linear here that model if you have any questions so there's something unclear i will leave my email behind you can send me a mail and if you are watching if you are uh watching this yeah yeah hunted this channel for the first time please do not uh, hesitate to click on the subscribe button you like you share you drop a comment okay thank you thank you for watching See you in the next video.